Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Kyle from SobKyle04 on YouTube and today I'll be covering the basics behind flushing your vehicle's coolant system. Of course, a big thanks to Valvoline for all of their support. Now this is a pretty straightforward process to which the general principles are going to apply to most vehicles out there, but for today we're going to be using our 1969 Chevrolet Chevelle. Flushing your vehicle's cooling system should be part of long-term maintenance. You don't have to do it as often as an oil change, but it's still very important when it comes to extending the life of your engine because you don't want it to overheat and you don't want it to freeze. They both pose their own unique set of problems that can get very expensive very quick. You also want to extend the life of the various components of the cooling system itself, like the water pump, the radiator, and even the heater core. Now before we dive into everything, it's important to remember that a cooling system is pressurized. So before you do any work to it, let the car cool off. Never take the radiator cap off when it's hot because the coolant can splash out and burn you and that's obviously no good. As far as checking the level of your coolant, I typically do it every three to 5,000 miles or every oil change and top it off as needed. If you're finding you're having to do that more often and topping it off a lot, you might have another issue that you want to investigate. As far as doing a full system flush, there's a lot of different variables that are involved with that. General rule of thumb is every 30 to 50,000 miles, but Valvoline's Xerox coolant is guaranteed for five years or 150,000 miles in like passenger cars and light duty trucks and whatnot. So it just depends on manufacturer recommendations, the condition of the coolant, how the vehicle is driven, where it's kept, just all sorts of stuff. Here's something else interesting. It's almost as important to use the right coolant that's compatible with your engine as it is to use the right oil. Especially nowadays with newer engines, manufacturers across the board have their own unique way of doing things. It doesn't matter if it's a Toyota or a Mercedes or a Ford, everybody's got their own little formulations and nuances specific to their applications. And what's really cool about Valvoline's Xerox line of coolant is that they offer the full broad spectrum. So if you need to do a flush or you need to do a top off, you don't have to go and get some universal all makes and models coolant. You can get the specific factory recommended coolant that either meets or exceeds factory recommendations and know that it's going to operate exactly as it should. Before I get the car up in the air and start draining coolant, I'm going to first take off the radiator cap. If you got the vent here, it sucks in air and allows the coolant to drain easier. The next step is going to be slowly unscrewing the radiator drain plug, otherwise known as the petcock. I have yet to find a surefire way of doing this that doesn't make some sort of mess, but one thing that helps me out is that once the coolant starts to flow, I'll put a funnel underneath it to try to catch most of it and have it go into an empty bucket or an empty jug for safe disposal later. This definitely helps minimize the mess. If you're switching to different types of coolant, for example, like me, I'm going from the traditional green coolant over to the Xerox G05, you wanna try to get as much of that old coolant out as possible to just try to eliminate any compatibility issues or anything like that. Plus, it'll make the flushing go by quicker because you don't have as much of that old coolant to try to get out. Thankfully, with the Chevy small block, there's two block drain plugs. So whatever didn't come out through the radiator petcock, those plugs can be taken out and you can drain everything else out of the engine, which is super nice. For the flush, I'll be filling the radiator back up with distilled water. Now, depending on how gnarly the coolant that you pulled out looked, you might want to add like a chemical flush solution to the mix just to help clean out that corrosion a little bit better. Thankfully, the Chevelle was already pretty clean, so I don't have to worry about going down that route. We'll just put the distilled water in, let it run for a bit, and then drain it all back out. To make life a little easier, you can also get one of these funnels at O'Reilly, which once you fill up the radiator to a point, you won't be able to add any more until the car runs and the thermostat opens and it starts pushing coolant through the system. But you can fill up this funnel 
to a point where it just kind of gravity feeds into the engine. It'll automatically bleed the cooling system because this makes it the highest point of the cooling system, which is really important, especially if, uh, you know, like my 240SX, if the radiator cap is below the highest point, um, it just makes bleeding a bit easier. But if you end up having excess coolant in this after you're done with everything, you could put this plug down in the bottom and then pour the leftovers into a jug. Now let's fire it up. After letting it run for a bit or taking it for a drive for 10-15 minutes, you just want to drain everything back out of the radiator just like I did a little bit ago. And you may have to do it a few times depending on how dirty everything is inside, but it's just a repeat process until you get everything nice and clean. After a handful of flushes, this is what we're wanting to see. Everything looks really clean. Ignore all those black specks. It's just a dirty catch pan. But all of the original coolant's been taken out. Now we got to make sure to drain as much of the water out as we can because especially when you're using a pre-diluted 50-50 antifreeze water solution, you want to make sure that ratio is kept as close to 50-50 as possible. Whenever I'm doing a coolant flush, after I fill up with the coolant that I'm using, I'll do one more flush of just using coolant as one final clean out. When I was talking to Valvoline about coolant recommendations, I was asking them about American Vehicle ZRX and Original Green ZRX. However, their recommendation of GO5 came strictly based on the chemistry of it. The American Vehicle ZRX is designed to protect newer engines and cooling systems like newer than 1996. Stuff with more aluminum alloys, aluminum radiators, and plastic gaskets and seals. The chemistry behind it is an organic acid technology, so when it came to the Chevelle, an organic acid coolant wasn't the best choice because it would have originally had a coolant with inorganic additive technology. That would have been a coolant like Original Green, for example, or Valvoline's multi-vehicle coolant. IATs are designed to work more with radiators that have solder and brass, and they also have great iron protection. So for this motor that has iron heads and an iron block, it's perfect. GO5 is a hybrid organic acid technology coolant. It provides the protection of the inorganic additives for immediate corrosion inhibition, and it protects the various metallurgy you would find in an older vehicle. It also has a small amount of organic acid to provide the coolant with a longer service life. When you start filling up with the new coolant, have your heater go in full blast. It's a good indication when you start getting to the adequate level of coolant because you'll start getting good heat throughout the cabin. Now, if you don't have good heat after filling everything up, you've got air trapped in the system. But once you have heat, check the radiator level and top off as needed. I just thought that was super cool. It just goes to show you how the Xerox line is specifically tailored for different applications. Be sure to check out Xerox at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts, but if you decide to shop online via OReillyAuto.com, use the code SK04, which gets you 20% off of qualified purchases of $100 or more. You'll find the link below. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I was able to help some of you who are thinking about tackling a coolant flush by themselves. I'm telling you what, it's an awesome feeling being a DIYer, being able to tackle something like this and get it all finished and wrapped up. It's just an awesome sense of victory. Be sure to check out team.valvoline.com for more information on Xerox and the rest of Valvoline's product lineup. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.